Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning. What up, what up, what up, what up? It's Friday. It's Friday. It's Friday. It's your Friday's edition of Treadmill Motivation. I'm so glad that you guys are here. I appreciate you guys. I really, really do. You guys been hanging with me. This is the episode 14 of Treadmill Motivation. Man, we just about ready to do this thing. Hey, Sarah. I think it's Sarah. What's up with you? Good to see you this morning. I uh, appreciate you guys chiming in. Like I always say, share it, share it, share it. Share with your friends, share with your loved ones, share with those that you know need to be motivated today. All right, we need to finish this up because Monday, I got some hot stuff for you Monday. Man, you're going to really love Monday's trip with motivation. I've been working on some things, praying and asking God to give me some something new for you, you know, but yet still motivating you and getting you pumped up and getting you ready to go. Let me plug in my microphone so you guys can hear me really well here. Hold on a second. Let's do it the right way. I want to plug in my mic. Uh, hold on a second. All right, hopefully that's better. I hope that's better. All right, is that better? I hope so. All right, hey, Marva, what's up? Marva, Marva, Marva. What's going on, Marva? Uh, you ready to work out this morning? You got that grandbaby over there. You ought to be running around the house. Hey, it's good to see you. Good to see you. Tell Big Willie Wheel. I'm saying, what up? Good to see y'all today. All right. Like I said, this is Eminem. This is Friday's motivation or Friday's treadmill motivation for today. And we're going to finish up uh, five spiritual discipline habits that will uh, totally change your life. And let me run back through the top four that we talked about because we're going to finish up with five. Because like I said, Monday, I got a new session for you. It's, it's hot. It's, it's going to... It's going to uh, revolutionize your, your motivation naturally, spiritually. It's just going to pump you up. All right. Uh, we talked about number one is in five spiritual disciplines that can change your life radically is praying. It's prayer. Number one is prayer. We understand that prayer is essential for a person of faith to have in their life to be strong in there, hey, good morning. It, it's, uh, it's, it's important for you to have a prayer life. And uh, Terry, what's up? How you doing? And that was number one. Prayer was number one. Okay? According to what we just read in scriptures on last week, if you go back and you look at Luke 9, and you look at the 28th verse, the B clause of that, and the 29th verse, where Jesus took Peter, James, and John up to the mountain. They call it the Mount of Transfiguration. But what we saw was Jesus' whole countenance change the moment he prayed. And what I was sharing with you, that if you have a prayer life, the very moment that you get down to prayer and you pray, your whole countenance change. Your situation might not change right then and there. Sometimes it will. Let me put that little clause in there. Sometimes it will. However, not always. So don't expect just because you get down to pray, things are going to change instantaneous. But it's good to have that kind of faith that when you get down to pray, that things will change instantaneous. That's the prayer and the faith that we have in our prayer life. Uh, Deanna, what's up? Good to see you. And... That's important for those that are of faith to believe that when you do get down to pray, there's going to be a transfigure, a transfigure. Like Jesus was transfigured, there was a change. So you pray and you, you seek God to know that when you get down to pray, things will change for you. Let me give you, for instance, when I say that God hears the prayers of those that are his children, is the very moment I have to go, all right, bless you, have an awesome day. Um, the very moment that Daniel got down to pray, God heard him immediately and he dispatched an angel immediately. Okay? Now, what held up Daniel's answer to his prayer? The one thing that held up was Satan. 
Satan is always trying to hinder and block your prayers, or at least the answers to your prayers. But when the angel got there, he says, hey, I heard you and answered your prayer or sent an answer the very moment you got down to pray. Oh, yeah. But that's our faith. Our faith is to know that God heard our prayer and God has answered our prayer. But we have to wait for the outcome of that prayer or the answer to that prayer. Just like with Daniel. You know, there's things that are fighting in the heavenlies to discourage you in the natural. There are angels that are fighting on your behalf in the heavenlies. Answers that, that God has dispatched to you the moment you prayed. There are, there are earthly, or you would say the principalities of this world, holding up those prayers, fighting those angels, trying not to uh, allow your prayers to be answered. So don't be despondent, don't be upset, don't be discouraged because you haven't gotten an answer to your prayer yet. It's already answered in the heavenlies. But the angels are doing what it takes to get you the answer right away. Eddie, what's up, man? All right, number two was fasting. That's very imperative to uh, spiritual discipline and how our lives as Christians and believers ought to have not only prayer, but fasting as well because it strengthens not only our physical man, but it strengthens the spiritual man as well. So that's very important. So the one is prayer. Number two is fasting. Number three. Number three was scripture reading. Now, you're going to pray, you're going to fast, but you at least need to read. Okay? Read some Bible. Find you a, a, a scripture that you like. Find a chapter that you like. You know, people always ask, I don't know where to read. I don't know where to start. Well, just start. You know, start in the New Testament. Start in the Old Testament. Wherever you start, you know, just start. And, and keep it consistent. Have a consistent reading regimen of reading the word. You don't have to read all day. You know, you can read five minutes. You know, take some time out to read maybe one chapter. Here, let me give you a good start. Start reading in Romans. Romans is a good boy. Start at Romans. Or start at John. Either one of those. Or if you want to learn about the beginning of the early church, start in Acts. I did a whole two-year study on the, on the book of Acts at my dad's church. Two years. We went through the whole book of Acts. And God blessed in that study. I was tired at the end. I was like, I need a break. My mind was just all just combobulated, you know. It's, you do something for so long, you just get kind of tired. But you know, it was a blessing. What's up, Robert? Good to see you, man. But here, scripture reading is number three. You know, like I say, my discipline habits, it, it sucks sometimes. Now, if you can be real with yourself and you can tell off on yourself, you would probably be the same way. Yeah, my discipline habits suck too. Have a beautiful day. Good to see you. Yes, yes, yes. Deanna, thanks for stopping by. Have a great weekend. Uh, put me on notification so you know that I'm back on Monday because Monday, like I say, Monday we're getting ready to bump it up. We're getting ready to kick it up a notch, yes. Uh, Emerald Lagasse would say on the food, food Network. We're going to kick it up a notch. Bam! All right. Number three, scripture reading. It's important for you to have a good scripture reading regimen in your life as a believer. You know, read the word of God. Strengthen your mind, strengthen your heart, strengthen you naturally, strengthen you spiritually. It's important to elevate your mind in a way that God can use you. And the only way that God speaks to you, well, I won't say the only way, but one of the ways that God speaks through is through his word. And it's important for you to hear him through his word. Yes, we hear him through prayer. We hear him through other methods. Uh, we hear him through our dreams. Because that's one way he can speak to you is through your dreams. But one physical way that you can hear God is through his word. All right, that was number three. Now, number four. Number four was worship. Oh, how important is it for, for us to worship our creator? How important it is, is it for us to, to give God his, his due? Worship to a Christian's life. It's imperative if we're aiming to be like Christ or be Christ-like. People say, I want to be like Jesus until the trials come. And then it's like, uh, I'm not trying to be like Jesus anymore. Christopher, what's going on, man? It's like, well, you just said you wanted to be like Christ. What's up? But when the trials and the tribulations come, 
we like, no, uh, I think I'll check out. I didn't sign up for this, but you did sign up for this. The moment you accepted Christ in your life, you signed up for everything that he went through. Now, granted, nobody's going to put you on the cross physically, but you do got to have to bear your cross daily. So when you're at your job, those are times of crucifixion. People are on your job, they don't like you because what you stand for. They don't like you how you look. They don't like because you think you're all that. Well, as a Christian, you should think you're all that because one, you are a child of God. So you ought to think that you are all that. There's nothing wrong with that. Just don't take it out of, out of uh, context to say that, yeah, I'm bad, I'm bad. You know, that arrogant a attitude. No, it's not being arrogant. It's being confident that God loves you. God has changed your life. God has forgiven your sins. And now you're grateful for what he's done for you. So you, now you hold your head up, stick your chest out. Be bold in the gospel of Christ and say, yes, I am a believer. Yes, I am a Christian. Yes, I am a child of God. That's not being arrogant. That's being very confident. All these people out there in the world system, they're confident in what they're doing. Sharon, how you doing? They're confident in all that they're doing. Why can't we as Christians be confident in what we're doing? It's amazing to me. It's very amazing. Hey, what's up? Uh, I can't see that. All I see is luck at the last name. Hey, good to see you. I tell you, I, I can see so much until I get my glasses on, my reading glasses. So I just say hi to y'all that come in if I can't see your name. Now, like I was saying, it's very important that when we have a chance to worship, and, and I was saying that it's, it's amazing that uh, people that consider themselves Christian, People that consider themselves godly will do whatever it takes to hide Christ. To, to that's amazing to me. You you should hold your head up. You should be bold and 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 bodacious about who you serve. You know the world society they brag about who they are. They brag about what they do. <clears throat> Excuse me. They brag about their lifestyle. Why can't we as Christians? Why can't you as a child of God? brag about and worship God in the freeness that he's given us you know but that's just like the devil that's just like Satan for those of you that don't believe in the devil you need to read your Bible the devil is real you know he stops he tries to stop everyone that's a child of God from worshiping God from giving God any credit hey what's up Tracy and he tries to stop you from worshiping God any way that he can because he understands how beautiful it is in heaven he understands that God is a just and and an awesome God and he doesn't like that because his attitude got him kicked out of heaven so yes he's going to try to do everything in his power not to allow you to go to heaven on that day that God calls you home so this is why it's a continuous battle every day and here let me give you a clue when your family and your friends start acting up, you have to look at it the way it is. It's the spirit within them that's causing them to act the way they do. It's not them. You have to look past this clay house and look inside who's residing in this clay house and who's making them act like that. The principalities of this world, the masters of this world, you know, if they're not a Christian, yeah, they're serving who they're serving. He's the one that's allowing them and, and committing them to or getting them to act a certain way towards you because of the spirit of God that's in you. Yeah, you got to call those spirits out. Call them out by name. You know, the spirit of hate, spirit of jealousy, spirit of gossip, the spirit of discord. They all have names. And when you recognize those names, you call them out by name. You know, you have to stand up there like I was saying some time ago. You know, you stand up in your cubicle and yell out across the office, I rebuke you, say the name of Jesus. John, you are a devil. No, you ain't got to do all that. You just sit behind your cubicle, be as quiet as you normally are, and say, Lord, I rebuke John. Excuse me. I rebuke John in the name of Jesus. <laughs> I rebuke Laquisha, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke that spirit, that, that backbiting spirit, I rebuke it. <laughs> 
And that's what you have to do. You have to rebuke those spirits. And guess what? Because the power of God that resides in you is more powerful than the, the spirit that resides in the world. Greater is he. Greater is he that is in you than he, <coughs> excuse me, that is in the world. That's power right there. So when you worship God, you worship him in the beauty and the holiness of who he really is. Your creator, your father, your dad. He's, he's created you. He's molding you. He's allowing you to be something that, that you've never been before. And that's always a beautiful thing to see a person go through transformation when they come to Christ. Is it easy? No, it's not easy. I'll be the first to testify that it's not easy. No, you're going to have trials and tribulations along the way. That's the name of the game. That's the way it is. You know, Jesus had trials too, but he overcame his as an example for us to know that we can overcome. Yeah, he was the son of God, okay, but in his earthly form, he was still a part of mankind. And so whatever mankind dealt with or was going to deal with, he overcame, <coughs> excuse me, to let us know that we too can overcome. And through our worship, like I say, number four, through our worship, we can and we shall overcome. But you have to worship God in the trials. You have to worship God in the temptations. You have to worship God in all of the adversities that you're going through. You still gotta, you still gotta worship him. Okay, people are not going to agree with you. Worship him. People will talk about you. Worship him. People won't support you. Worship him. Oh, can you hear me? If you hear me, type worship. You know, that's what, that's how easy it is. Just type worship. Worship. We worship him because of who he is and who he will be in our lives. All right. Now. Worship reveals where our allegiances lie in God. Our allegiances are with God. We've seen this war over in Iraq with all, that's right, worship. We've seen the war over in Iraq with all these ISIS fighters and things. They're worshiping, you know, their leader, you know? And it's funny, you would think after a while with the United States-led coalition, you know, one minute you see them, and the next minute you don't see them. That's right, worship, Marvin. That's what I'm talking about. You don't see them, and I'm like, okay, you guys are in a, you guys are in a battle that that is proven to be a lost war, right? The United States and the, the leading these coalitions, these uh, allegiances that are, you know, alleged themselves to the United States are going in and bombing all these places. You know, and it's like, don't y'all get it? You know, if you're going to be in a certain building and you're talking about all of this and all of that and you're trying to cut people's head off, guess what? The next couple of days, that building's going to be gone. It's going to be wiped out. So they're worshiping, you know, a lost cause. Naturally, they're worshiping a lost cause. Spiritually, they're really worshiping a lost cause because my God, your God, does not enjoy, okay? This might be hard for y'all, but he does not enjoy suffering. He was like, well, why does he allow it? Well, it's in order for you to see that he truly is who he is. You go to him, you seek him, even in the times of suffering. And I told this one guy, hey, darling, what's up? I told this one guy, he said he didn't believe in God, because why would he allow suffering in the world? Why would he allow? And I'm like, all you gotta do is research. You know, I'm not going to debate with you. You know, you're welcome to your opinion and your beliefs. You know, I respect you for asking these types of questions because we all have asked certain questions. There's nothing wrong with asking questions. There's no sin in asking questions. Ask more questions, I say. You know, if it's, if it's going to get you the answers that you need, ask as many questions as you possibly can think of. Nothing wrong with that. If somebody in church is offended by you just asking questions, there's something wrong with them. 
You should be able to ask questions in a respectful way, though. You know, so he's going to bust out on my wall. You know, my thing is, if you're going to bust out on my wall and I didn't invite you to to come into the conversation or a, or comment in a derogatory and disrespectful way, uh, one or two things that will happen. One, you might get chopped off at the knees. That's, that's the first thought of mine, chop you off at the knees. Two, I might def defriend you, you know, just wipe you out. I said, no. But there's a third, there's a third thing, there's a third clause, is love you into the kingdom. Love you in the midst of your rudeness. Love you in the midst of your trying to be disrespectful and, and shine light on your, your beliefs. So I'm gonna love you into the kingdom. So what I did, I told him, I said, you know what, I appreciate you asking questions. I don't, I don't, you know, dog you. I don't just debate with you and stuff. However, I will share with you what I've learned over my lifetime. Bro, what's up, man? So I told him, I said, it's like this. God reigns on the just as well as the unjust. Okay? There is no, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me. All right, hydrate time, y'all. All right, back to the point. There's no respect the person with God, okay? And I told him, I said, being that Jesus is the Son of God, okay? How many parents do you know <clears throat> that will allow their son or daughter to suffer in a way that Jesus suffered? if there wasn't some type of love undergirding what he was doing, okay? We talk about all these storms. We talk about all these accidents. Look at the fires in, here in California. I live in California. You know, land of the earthquake, land of the summer fires. Some of y'all live in Oklahoma, where this land of the, the uh, tornadoes. You know, you got Tornado Alley. But the thing is, God has not created any devastation what God has created he says in Genesis it is good however let's look at the real source the principalities of this world that wants to bring discredit to God turns all of this stuff into a disaster and now you have loss of life that's not God's desire can he stop it yes but the thing is he's allowing us to come to him and if it's through the methods of the principalities of this world well by golly let it be so if it's going to bring more attention to God some people just look at the negative side you know don't be a pessimist don't be a spiritual pessimist be a spiritual optimist and look at the the bright side of it look at the good side of it Kevin what's up look at the side that that is right instead of the side that's wrong okay now Number five, today's version. Today. Number five of the five spiritual disciplines that will totally change your life is service. Yep, you thought it was gonna be a mind blower, huh? You thought it was gonna be something really, really out there. It's just, a, it's just that simple. It's called service. Matthew, or Mark, excuse me. Oh, in the book of Mark, the 10th chapter and the 45th 45th verse around that clay that that a clause I'm like you know I like breaking up scriptures and verses you know usually you when you look at them because <clears throat> the way I've been trained in college when I see a verse it's like I automatically see outline you know I see a B and C and, and I see subtopics and things like that it's just the way I've been trained and you can train yourself when you read the Bible don't just read it dissect it don't just take it and just read through it, but take it verse by verse, line by line, and, and dig in and really understand what it's saying to you in practical applications, okay? But Mark 10, 45, and A clause is, even the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve. So number five is service. This is one activity not often seen as a spiritual discipline 
okay? Because most people think service, how is that a spiritual discipline? Well, you're about to find out. But if we are to live like Christ, if we are to be like Christ, then service, the act of service, cannot be seen as an optional exercise, okay? Our regular practice as a Christian should be to serve. It should be serving because we are servants of the Lord. We are servants of Christ. So we come to serve. Hey, Kev, I'm, thank you, man. I appreciate it. We come to serve. So everything that you do should bring some type of glory to the Lord. He's giving you certain gifts and talents. Showcase those gifts and those talents. Okay? Now the world sees your talent. The world sees your gifts. And they want to use your gifts. In a, in a way that doesn't bring glory to God. But even while you're working in the secular realm, okay, yeah, you got to get paid. I understand that. You got to make that paper. But while you're there in that secular realm, you can still bring glory to God. Even in the midst of you making that paper. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Got to make that paper, man. Make that paper. So, we're bringing attention to God through our service, okay? I heard somebody tell me they were in leadership position. And, and, and this really hurt my heart because <clears throat> I had thought to myself, well, how is that a good leader? Because they said, you know, people don't tell me what to do. I tell them what to do. I'm like, okay, I can understand that in certain dialogues and certain aspects of it, but that's kind of a bad attitude to have as a leader that you, you know, you tell people what to do. No, how about suggesting? You know, we delegate, yes. But when you get to that attitude that you, you're not serving, you're not, uh, you're not gonna help because of your title, that's not a servant. That's a dictatorship. Service is all about giving of yourself. Service is about sacrificing yourself. Service of a good leader is about giving of yourself. Okay, it's, it's one thing to be a leader. But it's another to be a leader that serves. Jesus was a leader that served. <laughs> okay? So those of you that are in leadership position, humble yourselves. Bring yourself under subjection of what the Word of God says about you serving. Yes, you are a leader. Yes, you are due your, your respect. You know, give honor where honor is due. But if you disrespect that honor, guess what? You're not going to get any honor that's due. It's just that simple. Now, it's not only something Christians do to give back to society, okay, your service. It's not the only thing that you do to give back to society. It's also a heartbeat and the pulse of our call to discipleship. That's the, that's the heartbeat of our call. That's the pulse of our call is to, to be out in discipleship. We're out there discipling, you know, discipline, discipleship. Disciple, right? How do you look at it? That's why I say my discipline sucks sometimes, and this is why I'm, I'm 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 in a position, or I'm positioning myself in a way to hear exactly what I'm sharing with you as God has given it to me. You know, it's just not I'm just telling you what to do, what to do, what. No, we're in this together. We're working out. Hopefully, we're working out together, right? You are sweating. <laughs> Even if you're doing this in one spot, you're still working out. All right, I got you. All right. But listen, there is no way we can accurately represent Jesus without emulating his commandment to serve others. That was his commandment was to serve others. Okay? I uh, see my treadmill's coming down to a close. We're almost done with this. <sighs> Our willingness to serve is an indication that we are maturing in spiritual virtues that's one way of, of realizing and noticing and recognizing that you are maturing in spiritual virtues is our willingness to serve it's like my partner here my new partner you know when I'll get a chance to meet him physically for our wedding is, is DJ Kev Nice I told y'all y'all need to look DJ Kev Nice up on Facebook he's a DJ He's going to be D DJ, DJ, DJ in our wedding. And I'm, I'm let, he, he knows what's up. You know, if you don't, he will when we get together because he wants to know what, you know, what we're looking for, what kind of atmosphere we want, you know, in our wedding. And it's important for even with him, you know, in his business.
to know what people want so he can serve them better, so he can serve them with excellence, he can serve them with uh, a level of uh, professionalism, because that's all a part of serving too, is your level of, of expertise and professionalism. That's a service. You know, he's got a gift. He spins them. Well, I don't know, he ain't got no records nowadays. You got records, Kev. You got, <laughs> we got CDs and we got digital stuff now. You know, we got we can go on and get digital stuff. But back in the day, man, you know, we was turning that, that, that wax. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we was turning that wax. All right. <clears throat> but here, it is very easy to read books, <clears throat> excuse me, on humility. Very really easy. You can pick up any book and read about humility. But it's more difficult to actually live with humility. Oh yeah. You know, we can read every book in the in the in the library on humility. But it's a total different thing when it comes to comes to living it. You know, being humble. You know, people want to be recognized, they want to be noticed, they want to be called out, you know. Allow your works to make room for you. You don't have to be the loudest one in the room so people can see you. Hey, look what I did. Hey, look at me. I'm good. Check me out. Check me out. No. The humility part of you will, you will I can slap you in the back of the head and says, calm down. Relax. They'll see your works. They'll see your service. They'll see your talents. Then they'll bring you to the front of the room. You know, that was my thing. I never liked sitting in the front of the room in a class. You know, I'm mellow out around the middle somewhere, you know, because... I know there's certain people that sit in the back, and I know there's certain people that sit in the front, okay? We all know who those people are. But if I, I sit around in the middle, because I have a chance to pay attention to what's being said, because I'm an avid you know, note taker and stuff like that, and I like paying attention to what's being said, if it's, if it's not a talking head, you know, you good information. So, you know, I sit around in the middle, and then once you, know, you do the work, the professor sees your work, They'll recognize you in front of the whole class. You ain't got to tell people, you know, I'm good, I'm good. I get straight A's, whatever. Your works will make room for you. Your gifts will make room for you. So relax on that side. Be humble. Service is a tool that God uses to teach us. Virtues that can't be learned from a textbook. There are a lot of things that you cannot learn in the textbook. Okay? Now, I'm not telling you stop reading. That's one of the... The, uh... The goals that are, what should I say, one of the uh, workout things you should have in your regimen is reading. Because it's very important to read. However, there are a lot of things you can't learn in a book. A lot of this is personal experience that you learn. Okay? So, so this only comes from the school of experience. Yeah. It, uh, hey, Rosemary, how you doing, sis? It comes from the school of experience. A lot of the stuff that we go through is from the school of experience. Now... I can definitely write a book on relationship. You think? And I just might do that. You know, there's a book that God had placed in my heart about the stuff that I was going through called Prisoner of My Pain. So look for that because once God finishes with me on writing that, ah, oh, I'm just putting it out there. The pleasure or the prisoner of my pain of what I've dealt with over my life dealing with certain relationships and why I got into certain relationships, why I allowed myself to get in certain relationships, and how I analyzed those relationships when they ended. People need to know the backstory. You know, they always see the front story, but they don't know the backstory. I got a serious backstory. People say, tell your story, tell your story. Well, until God releases me to tell the whole story, then I'll tell it, okay? There's some things you just don't need to tell people because, you know, they just, they just gossip juicies. You know, they just wait for something to talk about. You know, it don't matter what it is, they still going to talk about you. But be selective in what they talk about. So it's called Prisoner of My Pain at a store near you. <laughs> now, the beginning. The beginning of the, yes, as we started this, this five-step spiritual discipline that would change your life. I started out talking about at the beginning of the year and how we have uh, those, uh, what do you call them? Uh, New Year's resolutions, I'm sorry. They have those resolutions. Now, at the beginning of the year is always a great time, an opportunity for us to recommit ourselves to our walk with Christ. Now, why do we have to wait until the first of the year? Every day is a new day. 
we can start every day an opportunity to recommit ourselves to the Lord. You know, Paul says, I die daily. Okay, well, if he dies daily, he understood that, you know, he had to die to the worldly things of this, this world, the fleshy things of this world. Who's that? Dr. No, I can't see that. That's Blair Manchester. I guess it is. No, that's not right. Woo. I'll just say, hey, doctor. Because <laughs> I definitely can't see that. It's blurry. All right. But like I said, at the beginning of the year, it's always great time to start over. But we don't have to wait till the beginning of the year to start over. We can start over the moment we wake up. That's a brand new day that God allowed you to see. So you wake up and say, God, I thank you for another day. I thank you for a day that wasn't even promised to me. Right? Before we went to bed, we asked God, Lord, I thank you for the day that I've had. You know, the things that I'm suppressed, oppressed, and depressed about, I give it to you now before I go to sleep so I can have a restful sleep. And then the next morning, we wake up and say, Lord, thank you for bringing me through the night. Thank you for allowing me to see this day. Now I'll tackle those things that were oppressing me, those things that were depressing me, those things that were, were suppressing me on yesterday. I'm going to tackle them first thing today. And I'm going to take you along with me, Lord. So we start every day new. So why can't we recommit our lives to Christ every day? Lord, I recommit myself to you. I wasn't all that I should be today. I hurt some feelings today. I said some things that wasn't nice today. I did some things that weren't nice. I ask you to forgive me. I'm sorry. I recommit myself. And that's the wonderful thing about God. It does not matter how many times you ask God to forgive you. You know what God is going to do? His infinite love says, I will forgive you. Then he says, after you start thinking about some of the stuff you've done, you ask to be forgiven for, you know, forgive me for this. And God says, I've already forgiven you and thrown it into the sea of forgiveness. I don't even know what you're talking about. Why are you asking me about forgiveness that I've already forgiven you of? But that's the physical side of us. That's the nature side of the natural side of us is to always remember the negative and the hurt about our lives. But once we give it to God, God takes that and he throws it out into the sea of forgetfulness. He's the only being, only spiritual being, supreme being that has the ability to forget. He forgives and he forgets. Many of us want to be like Christ. You can't be like Christ if you can't forgive and forget. Now, let me put this disclaimer in there. Yes, we know that you can forgive and we understand that you won't forget it. Nobody's asking you to forget it. They're just asking you to forgive them. That's it. Because the mind, the psyche, holds on to things until after a time that you've worked on that memory muscle to get rid of that hurt, to get rid of that pain, to suppress all that negative, it's gonna continue to resurface. So with time, you work on that mindset and allow God to heal you completely of that past hurt. Allow him to heal you completely of that disappointment. Allow him to completely heal you of all hurt and pain. But that takes time. That takes practice. Many of the things that we've been talking about in treadmill motivation. You go back to YouTube, look up Life's Word Ministry. You know, I'd really appreciate it. You know, it'd be great. You guys go over there and follow me and subscribe. Help Life's Word Ministry get to 10,000 views. Man, that would be an accomplishment. That's one of my goals, is to, to have Life's Word Ministry on YouTube reach 10,000 views. There's like 13 different episodes. You know, just click on them and watch them, because that counts as being watched. All right, let me finish this up so I can let you guys go. Just like physical exercise. You know, I started out talking about physical exercise. How important it is for us to come on, you know, and exercise daily. Work your body daily. And this is something I'm going to be talking about on Monday in depth. Oh, I tell you, Monday is going to be real good. You guys, you guys got to chime in to Monday, Monday morning. But just like physical exercise or diets, uh, these five disciplines that we talked about this week, five spiritual disciplines that will totally change your life. These five disciplines will take effort and it, and it, and it has to be intentional. Okay. But it will greatly reward you in the end, you know, in the end, 
they will greatly enhance your spiritual life they'll enhance your spiritual walk they'll enhance your spiritual thinking and make a difference in the kingdom of God that was a great way to end wasn't it kingdom of God but think about it everything you do everything you desire to do everything that you desire to have all lies and rest in your walk in Christ in your faith you have to have, even people that are in church have faith they think they don't have faith but they have faith you know they might not give credit to God but they definitely exercise faith every day okay they might not say it but you look at people that's not in church that's not and I'm talking about I ain't talking about no building church I'm talking about in the household of God you you are the church not the building that's just somewhere where you go worship with some other believers I'm talking about this this right here this clay house that we reside in, that we are temp temporary tenants of this clay house, everyone has a certain level of faith. They just have to be exercised, exercise it in whatever method and ways that you exercise your faith. That's what's important nowadays. All right, time to close this out, y'all. It's Friday, I'm gonna let y'all go. Enjoy the rest of your day. I pray that what we've talked about this week in treadmill motivation, that you've been blessed by what you've heard that you've lost some few inches and you've lost some pounds. I'm praying with you on that one. That you have learned how to adjust your thinking from naturally to spiritually. That God will ever be present in your life. He will cover your family. He will protect your children. He will just put an umbrella of spiritual protection over you and your family. I pray that God continues to walk with you that he continues to show himself true to you i pray that as we continue this this form this treadmill motivation that not only one you do lose weight and two that you gain spiritual awareness spiritual knowledge spiritual understanding spiritual wisdom that's my prayer for you this is your boy eminem i appreciate you guys hanging out with me today and as i always say love god Love yourself. And please, by all means, love others. Live, hope, and change. I will see you guys on Monday, if not sooner. You know, I might do a special edition of Fat Friday Lounge, where I come on around the rush hour time of people getting off work and just play some jazz for you. Some upbeat, get your home music, or some upbeat, music to clean the house or whatever you're doing just chime in and just listen to the music it ain't about me talking for the fat friday lounge but it's about playing some good music that you can listen to all right appreciate you guys love you much we'll see you soon